I read the word this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word is taken from the book of Jeremiah chapter 8. Hallelujah. We can still praise him. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is in the midst of us this morning. And He just wants us to do what we are doing. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. And the word says, At that time said the Lord, They shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves we are hearing we are reading bones 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 those dead bones can praise praise the Lord at that time said the Lord verse 2 and they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked and whom they have sought and whom they have worshipped they shall not be gathered nor be buried they shall be for down upon the face of the earth Let's pray that our minister will be able to minister this word to us this morning. Verse 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places whither I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast the seat. They refuse to return. Ouch. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rushed into the battle. Yea, the stalk in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do he say? We are wise and the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For everyone from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness. From the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine. 
nor figs on the fig tree and the leaves shall fade and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them why do we sit still assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defense cities and let us be silent there for the Lord our God hath put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord we looked for peace but no good came and for a time of health and behold trouble the snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the name of his strong ones, for they are come and have devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices among you, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you saith the Lord when I would comfort myself against sorrow my heart is faint in me behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country is not the Lord in Zion is not her king in her why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities the harvest is past the summer is ended and we are not saved for the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt I am black astonishment had taken hold on me is there no balm in Gilead is there no finition there why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? My God, I don't know. But let's sit and let's listen to this word that the Lord has birthed in, in our speaker today. Please help me rep welcome the Reverend Dr. George Frederick to bring this word to us. Good morning, and it's great to be in God's house and among God's people. And I tell you this, while we are here in this gathering, which is controlled, we understand, because of the time in which, the times in which we live, there are people in the wider audience who follow. And so I want to say a special hello to Myron Phillips. He's in New York. Janet King, yes, I know you're all watching. The Lord with you. But I wish you all were in faith temple this morning because you're really having a good time. <laughs> I know they, they all through the, 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 the channel you, you're getting over, the kind of vibes you get when you're together. You know the thing? We're together again. Oh, praising the Lord. Woo! And he'll stop. I have to preach. <laughs> Listen, we are going to be sharing from God's word this morning. And I want us to ask a question. We live in some awkward times, some strange times. Believe you me, sometimes I was saying to the folks yesterday, sometimes you don't know where you're going or coming. Because the kind of reality. And I'll, we, I'll show you from the world how sometimes the situation creates awkwardness. And how do we respond in light of the situation? All right? Because we have to. We are going to talk this morning and listen very carefully. I, I'm going to send a lot of information. So I want you to pay attention. But they say we only remember about 10% of what we hear. But you're going to likely remember 50% of what you see. So open your ears and open your eyes. But most importantly, open your heart. Because that's where it's going to resonate. All right? We are talking this morning about conquering COVID-19 conquering COVID-19 and believe you me I want to thank God for those of you who send for those prayers I heard you sh letting go some anointing this morning from your prayer group thank you and madam chair thank you for your prayers and for those of you who are praying not only here but in the wider world thank you 
I want us to flow together. There are five principles that I want to establish this morning. Five. They're simple. The first one, in order for us to understand how we are functioning, you got to know what you are dealing with. Know what you are dealing with. If you're fighting a situation, you don't understand the situation, it just compounds the problem. Know what you're dealing with. Number two, know what works for you. Number three, know what works against you. However, in all of that, number four, know yourself. And lastly, but most importantly, know the healer, the God who, in whom we can depend on. We are not going to be abandoned the masters of our faith. God has placed us here for a task. And we are seeking his guidance. Holy Spirit, thank you for the praise that ascended this morning. I know your word tells us that you dwell in, you inhabit the praises of your people. And your presence here is sweet. It's precious. Lord God, one songwriter said, Jesus, you brought heaven down to us. And we thank you for that. But right now, Lord, sometimes it seems as though we are all living in hell. So we need the kingdom to burst forth and God to manifest itself. In Jesus' name. We thank you today. We thank you as you speak to our hearts. Thank you. First of all, we said, know what you are dealing with. In verse 9 of our text, that's Jeremiah chapter 8, it says, the wise men are ashamed. They are made and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? The reality of what is happening, why our lives are put in this truncated situation, is because a disease has come down on us. And even before we understand it, behind the scenes, this is what is happening. Co covered spell covering over a very infectious disease. Understand what's happening. Things were happening behind the scenes. There are people who are trying to manipulate our lives. There are some people who think the population is too much, so they're trying to eliminate and doing things behind the scenes. This is why it's important we understand what we are dealing with. Covered is uh, that it started out with a covering over of a very infectious disease. And I want to spell it out. All right? COVID, yes. I want to spell it out. First, understand, folks, it's a communicable disease. It's not high blood pressure. You can't catch high blood pressure. It's not sugar diabetes. You can't catch diabetes. But it is a disease that if we don't, if you're not careful, we can infect each other. Even in a wonderful environment like the one we are in. This is why we cannot live carelessly. How then shall we live? It is not only a communicable disease. The disease is an opportunist. It's looking for people who have all kind of complain. You hear me? And believe you me. What any kind of old thing you have, <laughs> COVID going for it and it coming for you. This is one of the reasons why they have discovered it's not fully settled yet, but the experts have, have found that children can get it and it ain't bothering them. They go around, cha la 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 la, pam pa la 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 la, then they let it do do they boom boom, and they come home and they bring it to you. Now you come with all your rickets and your bone thing and your all kind of thing. <laughs> That's the strange thing about it. Thirdly, how do you respond? It needs a response, not a reaction. 
please. And some of us have a tendency to, to, to get on and over, overreact. It needs a response, an intelligent response. What do you do? We'll, we'll talk about all that. We must know that there are official organizations that explain to us the facts, the data, or the details. Like, you know, WHO. Who's that? Right. And PAHO. PAHO. Pan American Health Organization. And CDC. Not Carnival Development Committee. <laughs> Center for Disease Control. Know the organization. The reason I'm saying this is because some people's mouths run like the Orinoco River. They just say, whatever comes to the mouth, they, they say. They hear something they heard fully and they take what they hear and what they didn't hear, add to it, multiply, and they're gone. And people who are confused, they contaminate people with their own virus. Check what the organization says. We need to follow the national statistics. All right? Right now in St. Vincent, we were just rejoicing of just a couple of weeks ago. <sighs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we had no active cases. But of the 11 plus 100 cases that were tested, and those that came out positive, 29, 39 all told, are those who have shown with the virus. Of them, 29 are healed or something so. So it's only about 9 or 10 people that really we are aware of now listen carefully we are aware of the one that bothers me perhaps the most i must say is the thing that is asymptomatic because this is the reality you and i can look strong like a toby Axon. you know what kind of beast that is eh a little young for that go ahead Go in National Geographic, you're gonna find it. <laughs> Strong like a lion. And yet you can be carrying across the disease. Asymptomatic, you see? If it was a disease where you get it, everybody <laughs> we will run. But no, you're looking well and strong. And you're singing and dancing, boom, 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 and you could pass on the disease. That's why I say, folks, wake up, smell the roses. A healthy human cure would be a vaccine. But then, until then, Debbie, the worst stage is when you're on a ventilator. Because that means the bell is beginning to toll for you. You know? So in the meantime, isolate. And isolation doesn't mean that nobody wants you. It's because we are saying, listen, we have to protect the environment. Isolation. Lockdown. But do me a favor, bail your resistance. Because some people, look, some of you walking and the slightest thing that passed, <coughs> you, <coughs> you catch it. Eh? Bail your resistance. Eat properly, exercise, rest. Strengthen your resistance. And do me a favor, folks, this thing requires a united effort. This is not a ULP, NDP sickness. It's a, it requires united. All of us must band together to fight this thing. It's not to our help. If we begin to put it in, is a, a dem den, a dem den, a dem den. No. And of course, in understanding what it is, you need to self-quarantine. I want to say self-quarantine. Quarantine is every vote quarantine you. I mean, my wife and I were just gallivanting some time ago, and we were coming back just before the thing bust out. Thank you, Jesus. But when we got there, we quarantined ourselves. There's no symptom, you know, but we quarantined. We still wear we be. You hear me? And when you put all that together, that's coronavirus but hear me folks I want us to flow together 
because a lot of people have this thing about ah, what did church do and what did church do and what did church say and if you want to get George Frederick Vicks come and tell him this kind of thing because since I've been preaching this gospel for over 53 years we've been telling people how to walk right live right stay right do that which is right be in obedience and if we did that a lot of things that come down on us ain't gonna happen but we walk in disobedience we do what we so desire and then when calamity hits now I want the church to do look don't get me vexed because if you get me vexed this morning I might have to give somebody else the mic thank you <laughs> so I'll be obedient <laughs> know what is what you're dealing with and and then secondly know what works for you but hear that verse again hear the verse again verse 9 he said the wise men are this are ashamed they are dismayed and taken lo they have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them Brethren, God is trying to get our attention. No, Mark, we're not saying that God is the one who sent COVID. But even if he allows it, it's for a purpose to get our attention. There are some people just me want this thing part because they want to go and wind down Kingston bad. They want to go and gallivant and get on. So they just want everything to be over so that they can go back to their usual lives. But hear me, secondly, God has sent watchmen and prophets. And look at verse 14 to 15. Hear what it says. This is the second point. Know what works for you. The prophets have been saying, why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defense cities and let us be silent there for the Lord our God has put us to silence. He has given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. The Lord is saying to not only to individuals and to communities and societies and nations, put water in your wine. Pull up your socks. It's time to seek the Lord that we we hear from him. So the prophets are speaking, his, his apostles are declaring and clearing the way. God is sending, know what works for you. Folks, it's a rough period. In this, what we can do is climbing over virtual instant death. If we hear this Bible says, you know, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken is, if we are walking in obedience, we will climb over virtual death. We'll get past this. But I want you to understand, here's a precarious situation that we are in. Let me, let, let, let's understand how this situation is, has, has us in a precarious position. I love to follow God's word. This book tells me, James chapter 5 verse 14. Is any sick among you? What to do? Let them call for the elders of the church and what to do with them? And do what? Anoint them with oil. That's the word of the Lord. We want to walk in obedience. But hear me. The situation right now says, avoid all this. Close contact business and all this kind of you. And hear what the word of God says also. The next one is, 1 Peter 2.13 submit yourselves what every ordinance of whom man for the lord's sake whether it be to the king as supreme so here is where one part i am told george anoint and lay hands the lord says keep off your hand and stay away and i must submit so what do you do there's a tension now here is where don't tell me not in school you know we have a situation where some you live with a thesis and a thesis is a statement of truth but it is counteracted by another valid statement which is called an antithesis 
You hear me? Now, I'm, I'm helping you to, how to deal with the complexities in your life. You have these two commands. They are each is authentic in its own way. But put them together, they seem to conflict. So it was one guy, George William Frederick Hegel. Not this George Frederick, but the one before me. He said, you need a synthesis to deal when you have something like this. You hear me? And this is what happened with the two scriptures we just read. All right? One is James chapter 5 verse 13. Any sick among you? Anoint them with oil. And of course, it's also said in Mark, in, in Mark 16. Hear me. But the law says, stay away from that. And the, the book tells us, submit to authority. Hear what Psalms 107 and verse 20 now tells us. All right? He sent his word and what? So hear me. Pastors, preachers, evangelists. It may not be wise and appropriate to be handing down. And in the name of Jesus, I bind and I cast. So send the word. Send the word. You see, if we follow scripture, the Lord, the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is wise. Make it a show, making wise the who? Simple. When we follow truth, we don't have to fabricate doctrines. Here's the pastor and the evangelist want to lay hands. But the situation says, no, and I must submit. So send the word. Heal them and what? And deliver them from their destructions. You see, it's important the church understand that we're not walking in ignorance god yes seriously know what works for you know what works against you now do me a favor as i indicated before there's some there's some people while you and i are here in church there's some people sitting in labs around some marble desks sitting in little conference rooms and they're planning and scheming and all kind of thing how they could manipulate our lives that's why the bible talks about principalities and powers and people lodging some very strategic places they need to be dislodged See, seriously no what works against you let me just give you a picture of what works against you. You see this? COVID is, uh, is those who are trying to have us conned. They're overpromising us. And they're vainly inspiring by the devil. There are people, understand it folks. Don't walk in ignorance. There are people who are still making merchandise out of the situation. Look what's happening in the wider, wider situation. Yeah? Even all know, if, if the statements are right, Russia still thinking of how they could manipulate situation to get ahead of America and China. It's not only money, you know. It's a thirst for power. A lust. And this is why the church must pray. Because when we pray, the weapons with which we use they're mighty through God. They dislodge principalities. They pull down powers. Things that exalt themselves. God, when we pray, when you and I put our knees to the ground, or we bind ourselves together in prayer, we are touching things in the heavenlies. We are dislodging things around us. Do me a favor, man. This, this thing has made our life uncomfortable. Some of us afraid to come to church because of that. Me no go that. Yes, because in reality, if you sit down there, there, sister or brother, and start to, <coughs> you have to. <coughs> 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 
<laughs> so you can't even cough in peace. <laughs> What's up, the snail? That <laughs> well, listen now. That door might not hold us. <laughs> but listen, it has affected our social lives. Read the text. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse. That text that talks about all those bones of the prophets, the priests, the kings, everybody exposed. It, it, it brings us down to a common denominator. God said he will expose it. So position will not save anybody. Names and possession will be irrelevant. He will expose every tooth moon. Not no bad guy, bad guys, animals. If the St. Lucian's here and I say that, they're going to see we're talking. We're mixing up their thing. All right? Tooth moon. Seriously. The thing is, we have a situation on hand. Not only are we affected, I mean, socially, but spiritually. Yeah, what he said in verse 4 and 5. Moreover, thou shalt see unto them, thus saith the Lord, shall they fall and not arise? Shall they return? Shall it he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual what? Backsliding. They hold fast to the seat and refuse to moan. I want to I want to paint this picture that you can see it because there are lots of people who feel that Christianity to them is the inside today the outside tomorrow they're like in and out the dusty window you can't monitor them Christianity is not something you pick up hot and sweaty Woo! praise the Lord glory to God and the moment you hear somebody say something against you you stupid it you're gone you turn away from God let me give you a picture of that. Could you imagine if a dog had an upset stomach? And the dog going up. <laughs> and the dog, excuse me. <laughs> and it left whatever it is there. And it gone down. <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> but by the time you reach down the road, it's still a little happy. And the dog turned back. <laughs> hey, hey. Pizza? <laughs> Hamburger. <laughs> you see, the language is very vivid. And if you don't get a picture of it, you will just academically gloss over it. When a person backslides, it's like a dog returning to its vomit. That's what the word says. And that's what happened to Israel. After all that God had done for them, those ungrateful people. Ignore the goodness of the Lord and still you see God we want we, we long for a little uh, um thing in garlic and leeks and thing and onion and thing and lie because they know in Egypt this get some blows some old thump and some kick and cough when those frustrated Egyptians in the, those very taskmasters in the hot sun get back when the sun born in them and they find the people are oh, they work fast they take it out on them but conveniently they forgot all that ask me now no seriously it's important but we were socially um, affected we were spiritually affected we are economically affected look at verse 13 I will surely consume them said the Lord there shall be no grapes on the vine no fig tree, no figs on the fig tree and the leaf shall fade and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them some people who sit down here in St. Vincent will not do what needs to be done but no waiting for another people to bring burial well right now them them must be one burial for themselves seriously can you imagine some of those fruits that we're enjoying, they wish you could get some of them now. So the thing, know what works against you. Some are trying to con us over promises and vain inspire by the devil. 
Fourthly, know yourself. Know yourself. It's important we understand this one. Jeremiah chapter 17, um, chapter 8, okay, verse 7 and 8. And this is where I love my National Geographic because there are places that they bring me to that I can't go. So I say to my in the drawing room and enjoy them. Well, Elsie gives me a nice glass of peanut butter drink. You understand? Brother Mac, don't tell me I'm getting fat. I, I, I know. <laughs> verse the animals they understand the language the birds know when it's time for migration the stalk in the heavens know her appointed time and the crane and the swallow all right they know they observe the time of their coming they know when it's time to pick up and the cover and gone to safe places they know that but we human beings endowed with intelligence sometimes walk on as though we, we head on top with foot seriously we sometimes don't even understand the times in which we live God is sounding it loud and clear he's awakening the nations take warning if they intended covert to be something to eliminate population and to do other things god is using it as an instrument to warn people folks to know yourself know where you stand are we walking with god is my life right with god am I, is, it, is my heart in the right place we don't want things to just come on us cave in on us no if the animals know their migration period mankind must understand the signs of the times know yourself but lastly and I know some of you say yes I'm glad you nearly finished <laughs> hear me lastly know the healer know the one behind all the scenes folks do me a favor your life and my life is not at the women fancy for people to do what they want when you are walking under the covering of that blood you hear me the Bible says that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto death listen hear what this scripture says 22 it asks a question and this question is in rhetoric form is there no balm in Gilead is there no physician there the question is a rhetoric one it's not one that the, the answer is implied we should be echoing yes there is a balm in Gilead yes there is a great physician and i know him and when you walk with him and talk with him and he tells you that you are his own listen no evil can harm you the weapons that are formed against you they shall not prosper the tongues that rise against you in judgment shall be condemned this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and their the righteousness of me said the lord know the healer there is a bomb in Gilead there is a great physician so he asked the question why then is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered why aren't if people walk in obedience if people understand what we are dealing with what works for us what works against us and understand ourselves and then know who the healer is our lives 
could be far better handled. But let me, on the, this final point, walk you through the healing. Because, listen, first of all, coronavirus, it says, let's put up the next slide there now. Clean the environment. Clean the environment. Psalms 24 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath what? Clean hands and a pure heart. You understand? No, we, do, we don't want to be abusers of the word of God. Clean hands in that context refers to what you do. Make sure that your, the work you do is clean. That you're given an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. That you ain't skiffing time and stiffing your boss time and doing all kind of thing and come back. Bless me Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. No, 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 no. Clean hands. When you look at the income you have, you must know that your hands have worked honestly for this. You understand? And this is where we're sending a word loud and clear. People must stop teething. Well, stealing, my wife says. <laughs> but this emanates from St. Vincent. When we say teething, we know what we're talking about. So all you're hearing it. Stop teething. Seriously. But they were clean hands and a pure heart. And the heart essence represents who you are. Too many things. Some people had, and the, our, our bishop was talking about it last week. About people who have too much people in their mind. You're going to sleep. Your heart heavy. Because you have somebody in your mind joking as you're making. Eh? Life too short. Just the other day, I was young, tall, dark, handsome, and sexy looking. If you didn't see me. <laughs> Whoosh! The ages come, boom! The afro, boom! Sideburns gone! The six packs, boom! But don't laugh, it's come, you're coming. <laughs> Clean the environment. And do me a favor. So, some of us just have some behavior. Give me, the, put up the next one there for us. Right? It, it, it applies. They, they observe healthy habits. Some of us have some behavior where we just, we're touching everything. We're scratching our part. Crap, 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 crap. crap. And then we're taking up something. And, and then, same hand, something. Then taking one feature. God, look. Clean your hands and stop the healthy habit. Isaiah 6 verse says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousnesses are as what? Filthy rags. And we don't fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Look, do my favor. If we observe these things, time is going, people must be getting hungry. Give me the next one. Voluntary quarantine. Voluntary. If you feel that you ain't feeling well and you're not sure, watch, stay in your bedroom. Call out. Mabel, pass the water by the door and when you open, I'm not going to take it. Well, sorry for the Mabels in the church. We, we, we don't mean to be unkind. I should have said George and Elsie. If I wake up and uh, I, I first start to, <laughs> I go into another room. <laughs> you mean, brother, brother? I love my wife so much that I, I want to go and hug up the girl. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You love me? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> love does not do ill to its neighbor.
So, what's the next one, sir? Go on, go ahead. Go to the next one, sir. Information must be, you must be information savvy. And by this we mean, know what is happening. Know what we are working with. Hosea says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Understand what's taking place. Where we are at. Okay? God has blessed this country. We have not read, and we don't have to cry wolf bull, we have not really been hit by any tornado of COVID. What we have is a people who come, when they come to the land, boom, boom, they bring them. And some, and some of you, so licorice and apparitions. You know the Telemann quarantine, but because they had a little $2 to, with, with the people facing it, well, he has something for me, Sagan. You know? Wait till the two weeks pass, now I'm there, go dead. <laughs> Listen, sometimes I honestly forget that this thing goes viral and this kind of behavior. Is really showing sure before us, <laughs> but I'm sorry. You're welcome to our world. <laughs> but you understand what's happening? Be information savvy. Be aware what's happening. Follow the the the, the, um, the, the guidelines properly. Okay. Yes. And this one is important. Very close to it. Keep the distancing. I mean, if I, I, I've functioned as an evangelist for years, and there's nothing I love more than when I see the altar is ting with people. You hear me? And especially when the Holy Spirit begins to do His work. But folks, do me a favor. In this environment, be careful. I've had some pastors. When I say I've had some, my, they're my brothers. They, they knew all that, they know that, they said, come, come. God, God, come, come next to you. They knock out, the members knock out. We don't want that. Wisdom is the principal thing. Of course. And in order to get them, get understanding. What we're studying is understanding of what we're dealing with. We don't want to be a part of the problem we want to be part of the solution so this is it. and hear me let me get a clean one the other part tissue you see there's no scripture to talk about tissue <laughs> so I have to gather the tissue and it's tissue <laughs> tissue use the tissue when you finish with the tissue dump them In a, in a, that's right. Yes. Wash hands. And at times you got to wear your mask. I want to give you an example. We are not fooling ourselves. This thing is not comfortable. We know that. When you walk on this thing, it really is not comfortable but many of us sometimes if you have to go to the bank or so on you're catching early over so a long line of you line up all right keep your distance but then sometimes the rain come and all you know cluster in <clears throat> and we cluster in the thing folks it's wise You hear me? No, 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 right, wrong way. Watch. Do my favor. Put it on. You're protecting both yourself and the people around you. At least to a point, eh? Because if you say the long, 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 the thing will come to the side. I want us to understand that ultimate security lies in God. You hear me? But do what you can. Wash your hands, wear masks. This one is important, enlighten others. And I say the word enlighten. Note the word enlighten. And I'll tell you why it's important. 
because we live in a commerce oriented environment people love to talk commerce and for commerce to thrive you have to add things to it and multiply you get a little piece of something and you add to it add to it so by the time you're done here you understand that's not an, you're not being enlightened you're not being helped when you give yourself to the talk of the people you're not being built up and admonished your life is not richer for it but when you have information when you have clear understanding enlighten others if there are things that you have understood and you know then share it all right and close to that enlighten others do a neighborhood watch if that house is a quarantine house and there are people inside there who are quarant on quarantine but they're coming out and run all the place call out and tell them and if not call the police you are doing a proper duty at that point that's a neighborhood watch all of this is core is is is, co is conquering COVID-19 but with all of that folks the penultimate part is talk to your heavenly father he said in Jeremiah 33 3 call on me and I will answer I will show you great and mighty things which you know not of look at Dede seriously God invites us to call he is the healer let him know we are we are in dire straits. We, we were in a situation is awkward and I don't want to pretend to you I don't like the situation that we're in I would love it to pass I know that some of my enthusiastic friends are saying yes it's a time for the new normal and so on and it has its place I don't want to be, um, be speaking with a forked tongue but the reality it's a, it's an uncomfortable situation you're going to work you don't know who catch it you come to church you don't know what it sister somebody who's to like to always come and, ah, and come and hug you have to say ah. <laughs> you, ch you know when you stop here and I, and I was telling somebody this when the whole one of the things that's well not scared me scared us it's all about children they are abroad and the other day when not a plane no go no boat no go no way if anything i'm saying to them that's it you can't go no way my wife was reading something on facebook um sometime as she was reading it something says rest in peace my dear brother and she called, she read out the name i said who's that because i know a friend of mine from grenada by that name by the time I pick up the phone and call the person's home, the wife is angry. Said, "Yes, two weeks ago he got in the hospital and he died, and they told her, don't come." So her husband gone to hospital. He dead, buried. She didn't know where he buried. She, you understand? All that she will get in the post is a death certificate. Can you picture that? Because wisdom, they said, because they don't know if she had it. So they asked her, don't come. And it's, that happened to several people. Could you imagine if our, our relatives, these things happen to what, what kind of situation that we're in? It is not a proper situation. We need to bring this thing to where it belongs. Seriously. And the final, and not, not, we've established the principle, but the final point on this principle is, yield to him your body and soul at the end of the day COVID-19 can touch this body you hear me but it can't touch my spirit it's important we understand that hear what Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 says all right and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul 
All my fears are towards my God. He is the one I fear. Folks, do me a favor. We do not know. Life is not in our hands. We can be boastful and braggadocious. I know Reverend Denny still have it as a laugh. When one Sunday, when, when we call this one, the, the, <laughs> the chicken go near. We, man, the Sunday morning, we bind chicken go near. No? <laughs> Where you know? All I know is that the Monday night, I get her to pee and I can't go. I can't walk. I say, oh God. Elsie, <laughs> why is that? <laughs> so she said, wake up. Judge, judge, why is that? I said, girl, I know. I know, but look, look at my female self. <laughs> Justin, don't laugh at me, please. <laughs> when chicken go near, got into your bones. <laughs> Some of us couldn't move. Fortunately, it didn't last long. Praise God. But the point I'm saying is that we need to know how to conquer by knowing the healer. And to conquer COVID-19 is by dealing with COVID-20. This is COVID-20. Note it. And we're not living in fool's paradise. We're not just here indulging in nice, sweet, sounding things. There are things that we must do. When we deploy them, we could conquer COVID-19 by using COVID-20. And COVID-20 was just spelled out just before. And that's it there. I want to thank the person who put this PowerPoint together. I didn't get the permission to call the name, so I don't, I'm not going to violate that. But I want to thank that individual very much. Thank God for the talented people, the gifted people, and they're right here in the church. You hear me? Conquer it, folks. Think like a conqueror. We are not abandoned masters of our feet. God didn't put us here to just sit down and, oh children, don't you weep, don't you moan. Oh children, no. We are more than through him who loved us and gave himself for us. If this thing has been an architect design of Satan, well, let me say like the Jamaican guy, Satan lose. You hear me? If it's a plan engineered by some so-called scientists to scheme and desire, ex God said he will expose them. It will be exposed. And we are speaking it into being. Our lives must not be manipulated by people for their own ends and for their own gain. If they have a point to prove, we are not their pawns on their chessboard. In Jesus' name, we stand against them. We must conquer COVID-19 in the name of Jesus by deploying COVID-20. We yield our bodies and soul. Folks, yes, walk in wisdom, walk in love, walk with understanding, walk with knowledge. But know ye for this, understand this. When you know the truth, what the truth does, Freeze you up, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And while the environment is not one for bringing people in front of altars, you create your own altar in your heart. And say to God, 
I yield you my body and my soul. I yield it to you. Yes, my Lord. Yield it to you completely. In Jesus' name. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? In your heart, does the spirit control? You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest when you what? Yield him your body and soul. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your yielding. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your truth that endures forever. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for using your servant this morning. Very sobering. When we began reading, I, I, I was troubled by all of these bones. Thank you for clarifying, Bishop. Yes. So we are all exposed. But our advantage is, as children of God, we know whom to call. We know whom to run to. We know where our help comes from. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord, for your word. And before we continue with anything else, I think it's fitting, Reverend Denny, that you come and offer a prayer of covering, a prayer of healing, a prayer by faith for those who may be right here among us or even in their homes, that you take our people before the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us all stand, please. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just want to give you thanks. Hallelujah. God, the entrance of your word giveth light and life. Hallelujah. So God, we are saying to you this morning, as we lift our hands to you, God, thank you for your word. God, thank you for your word. God, as it enters into our spirit, oh God, let there be life. Let there be health. Let there be strength. In the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus. You are the health of our countenance. You are the glory and the lifter of our head. This morning, oh God, thank you. Thank you for your word. God, thank you for your word. Hallelujah. 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 God, you watch over your word to bring it to pass. And you said that your word will not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish all that you have sent it to do. So right now, God, we appropriate the power in your word that says you sent your word and you heal them. So right now, God, we appropriate in your healing power right now in the name of Jesus the one who was wounded for our transgression the one who was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed God we are healed so we appropriate in healing now in Jesus Jesus name in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let your healing power flow let your miraculous power flow let your creative power flow God in the name of Jesus let sick bodies be healed in the name Jesus, set mine broken spirits. Oh God, touch in the name of 
we call it done and we plead your blood now to cover hallelujah oh god we speak peace to those that are troubled those that are distressed we speak your peace in the name of jesus in the name of jesus god for those who don't know you oh god let them experience you this morning let salvation be theirs this morning god as they will call upon you you said we will call and you will answer because you wish that none should perish but that all should come to repentance so god we speak salvation in jesus name be thou glorified lord we say thine is the kingdom god the power is yours and the glory all the glory belongs to you thou great jehovah the i am that i am <laughs> yes thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit god meet needs oh god there are those who came expecting to hear from you god they needed guidance they need a word from you thank you for doing it thank you for bringing it to pass thank you for fixing what need fixing thank you for correcting what need correcting lord hallelujah thank you lord thank you we bless you and god we love you thank you for first loving us thank you for always being there for us thank you lord hallelujah